Hi, everyone. Hi, Agam. Hi, Astar. Hi, Moore. I'm Jordan Namoro, a writer and communications professional based in Boston. I'm delighted to be facilitating a conversation about the film, too, um, with the director, Astar El Kayam, and the lead actors, Moore Paula Nuer and Agam Schuster. Um, many of the themes in this film resonate for me personally, and certainly for many people in my community. My wife and I both went through the process of choosing a sperm donor to have a child, and we both experienced challenges with our fertility. So I'm very, very grateful that Two is shining a spotlight on the emotional and the physical journeys of a lesbian couple eager to become parents um, and showcasing the strain that building a family puts on their relationship. Moore and Agam, I thought your performances were so beautiful. You captured both the pain and the possibility involved in what it takes to build a family, particularly as a queer couple. And I thought it was so moving and poignant and I have a lot of gratitude to both of you. There's a lot to unpack in this film probably more than we have time for. So I would love to dive in. Good? Let's do it. Yes? Okay. Yeah. A, a star, as the writer and director, I would love for you to share what inspired this story and what the project means to you and a bit about your process for bringing it to life. So, of course, I was inspired by my by my personal life. Um, I was going through this process myself and uh, with my ex-wife. <laughs> of course, it's not autobiography, the, the film, uh, but I did, a, I wrote the script uh, as a part of processing the pain, the, the joy, the like the emotional roller coaster uh, this process uh, brings to, uh, the the woman who going was going through the process uh, and how it affects uh, the the relationship between those uh, women and now I'm a happy proud uh, single mom uh, for a two and a half uh, years old child uh, but, but um, it was really now when I when I see how the film is uh, like uh, in fact uh, uh, impacts other people, I'm really happy I did it because I did it like a very I did it uh, like a personal. Um, I just wanted to tell a story, a personal story. Uh, and it's an independent movie, uh, really authentic. Uh, we did it. Um, it was a very, very special uh, uh, process uh, 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 creative process uh, the, 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 to create the film. I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't speak English for a long time, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it's very clear, you're great. <laughs> okay, I, I will ask more and Agam two questions and then I'll go back to you Astar. Is that okay? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I hope more, it will not uh, freeze. Ah. More, tell me what drew you to the role of Omer and how did you arrive at this project? Okay. Um so Astar and I are uh, good friends. We worked together before this feature film and other productions. Um and then one day Astar just told me that she's working on a script um for a feature film and if I would like to read it and I said of course and I read it and I really loved it and then she said would you like to play Omer and I said of course. Um and then we just uh started this journey together with um, like practically nothing, no uh, funds, no anything. And Astar was really uh, determined to, to um, make this film come to life and, and happen. And um, we started like trying out scenes with like a small DSLR 
uh, camera and uh, and then we started casting and we found the beautiful Agam, which is also a really nice story that we can tell. Um, and yeah, so it was just, uh, it started as a, like something that, that grew from our friendship and hopefully because she also wanted me for the parts. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and uh, and it was a really beautiful process. Wonderful. And Agam, what motivated you to accept this role and um, bring Bar to life on the screen? I think it was kind of a magic from the very first moment. Um, a star writing to me, like in Facebook, and I was about to go to my honeymoon in Thailand and Vietnam with my wife. And it felt so, I don't know, cosmic. She, I, we read the script really quickly and then I met Mo and it was like immediate connection and chemistry by look, by talk, by touch. I don't know, it was just no question. And then was the problem of me leaving. And they said that they will wait. And so we, we had like, his, we <laughs> fell in love, like, yeah. So we had like we a long distance relationship at the pre-production. And the, the most important thing that me and my partner, we were at the very beginning of the same process. Like that movie was like two or three steps ahead of me <laughs> in my personal life. So like Mo said, everything in this project felt like need to happen. We didn't meet by an accident. Everything was really connected and, and in the place, in the right place, in the right time. And bye. Is amazing yeah. character, very complex and very sensitive, and very. She's like a storm from inside and outside, and she needs to to show normal and to behave, and and she have lots of struggling through the daily life, and I felt really connected to this uh, path that she need to go through. And it was a big challenge and, and a gift for me as an actress. I'm wondering how audiences have received um, the character of Barb because the film addresses so many different challenges that she has, depression and the social expectation that women have a biological connection to their child um, and the vulnerability that a non-biological parent experiences. Um, so I'm just curious, how have audiences um, received the portrayal of Barr on the screen? It's an amazing question. And also, once again, it's related to my personal life because I'm not the biological mother of my own child. And at the big screenings of, of, of the, the, the premiere, when we, we had a talk, some uh, older lady, she, she, she asked a question, why do you leave every time? Why does your character just leave? And I was like hurt in my inside. I felt the tears coming up to my eyes. She thinks that I don't love Omer anymore. She thinks that I quit. And, and Everybody thinks that the mother or the other side that is not pregnant is, is not going through the process. That's okay, you do nothing, but you are so um, dedicated to this. You feel everything in your soul and body and mind and you don't have any rights. Like you can be a fully parent, but in one second it can vanish. So in my, in my opinion, to be the non-biologic mother have lots of difficulties that you can't explain in words. Oh, my stomach aches, I need to, and, and, and it's, 
everybody asked this question, why does she leave? It's not the first time, how can she do it? But you know, deeply inside, she's the one that is from the inside, don't have the shayachut, shayachut. Like belonging, <laughs> sense of belonging. Yeah, belonging, she, she's not be belong, so yeah. It, it appears all the time when people talk about it. It's, it's, it's a really good question. I also have something to add. Actually, I think I haven't to, never told you that Agam or a star that I got um, like comments um, from two different people on uh, Barr's character um, that it was, um, I mean, a, Barr's character is really, um, like complex in the sense that she's going through um, like mental, emotional challenges of her own. Um, and, and then going into this process, it takes a really big toll on her. Uh, she's like on psychiatric pills and, and, um, and sometimes it causes her to, um, I mean, I don't know if, I mean, everything together um, comes to her, as she said, like leaving or, and I, I two of my friends uh, who are gay women uh, told me that they really saw themselves in her character and it was not easy for them to see. Um, like they are also struggling with their own like, um, like emotional, mental challenges. And um, they saw the way it makes Bar behave in the relationship. And it was like, not easy for them. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, I don't know how to say it. It's just a very unique character. Um, not not always easy to understand and digest, as Agam said. <laughs> One of yeah, I mean, I I felt the pain and the rawness and the ways in which the challenges were really manifesting in Agam's experience individually, but also the toll it was taking on the relationship. And I thought the two of you really represented that beautifully. One of the things that I often think about as the parent of a child conceived with a sperm donor is that my wife and I did not have a script or a roadmap or any formula for how to create a family. Um, there was just an assortment of choices that we were privileged to have which were also sources of stress. Um, and one of the things at the beginning of the film that I thought was both kind of comical and very true to our experience was shopping for a sperm donor and sitting there and kind of thinking about choices and what it means. So I'm wondering um, if you can reflect on sort of the beauty and the overwhelm of making choices to build a family and how that was represented in the film. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here is your question. Here is your answer. <laughs> I entered this process um, really. I was really naive. I thought, well, everybody gets pregnant. Everybody like uh, have children. I will uh, fulfill myself, make art, I'll travel. Someday I'll get pregnant. I didn't realize it's gonna be like uh, the most uh, powerful and amazing uh, journey I will ever go through. Uh, and uh, like, as you said, I was learning through the process, like I was uh, going through things that I, I never imagined it will be like that. And there's a funny story about it. 
speaking of uh, sperm donor, uh, I wrote when we were shooting this uh, scene, um, the, it's like a really funny situation because you're supposed to like choose a father for your child by like, you know, a, a list of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, the color of his eyes or uh, what, what animal he likes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I wrote the script and it, it was really funny for me because uh, I knew how it was and uh, something didn't work when we were shooting. And then I told the girls, you know what? I have, I still have the, like the, the username and the code for the, for the catalog. And I like opened the real catalog on the, on the laptop and they were actually like in the situation seeing the, actual donors i mean of course the afterwards i edit it so it won't be um uh, like uh, what they read from the from the description of the donors but uh, when when you see them laugh it's it's really it's like really they really laugh from what's written over there uh, it was funny and from the but, one uh, <laughs> we were trying to make uh, things as authentic as possible. We shot in uh, my house with my car, with my dog. I mean, mine and my uh, ex-partner. Uh, she was there while we were shooting. I was going through the process myself while we were shooting the IVF process. So uh, as Agam said, it life and uh, and the creation of this film really like mixed together and it's uh, really like she said it was cosmic because we were talking about things that that are really happening in our lives now i mean i was directing a scene and it, it's really what i felt in uh, in that particular moment so uh, it was really it was an amazing process really I don't know if that answered your question but uh, I was just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it definitely answered it um I didn't more okay. did you have something else you wanted to add um no no not yet <laughs> maybe in a moment so I want to ask you about the end of the film because my my wife and I watched the film together and we were we were sad and a little bit surprised um, because we were you know we were hoping that Bar and, Om and Omer would stay together. We were kind of like rooting for them and fighting for them. Um, so I'm curious how you each related to the ending of the film um, and kind of the message that you were hoping it would convey to audiences. I can tell a story. Right. This, okay. Um, so, um, in like when the script was first written, they ended up together uh, in the first draft. And uh, then we started working. And then at some point, um, me and Astar talked, and she um, told me, Listen, I'm going to change the ending, and they're not going to end up together. And I was like, Why? <laughs> um, and she said that she felt that um, like love is a very strong force, but life is stronger sometimes. Um, and that it feels more uh, authentic and honest to have this ending. And I really, um, as much as you would, I mean, you want, it, you want them to end up together and be happy um it's it's life and life is not always um expected i mean this whole process was not really expected for them but um the ending was the least expected and it's and it's um reality and uh but i also think that the um the ending is not so sad um because um like her wish was to have a child and she managed to do it after a really long process. And um, 
Um, so she had something really amazing and big in her life. And uh, there was some pain in that, but a lot of happiness and, and joy also. And I think that mixture is really beautiful. And um, so I was happy with A Star's Choice. So. I almost <laughs> quit. I said no. <laughs> I said no. It, it was really hard for me. And every time I was like coming to a star a chair and I was asking, are you sure? Maybe <laughs> another option. And, and it, it's nice for me to hear more right now because she's right. I think that I'm optimistic as a person, but the, the fact that something just crumbled through the time you don't know when was the first crack, but you know that it can't be the same anymore. And when you're trying to revive again something that is already broken or dead, it will be pain for everyone that involved in this thing. So Bao found another woman. I hope that they didn't broke up. <laughs> and, uh, and Omer is having her baby child so you need to accept sometimes that things are not as you wish and I don't know there is this movie that I love one of the most that calls the 500 days with summer and everything is perfect and they breaking up and why so yeah sometimes it's like an extra mile or they can't I don't know. They just couldn't. Yes. I was definitely struck by the portrayal of life and love as messy endeavors and how we can hold each other through the mess and arrive on the other side and still find some fulfillment or sense of belonging or peace. And I'm curious how the story has been received among Israeli audiences and, else, and how it's been received in American or European contexts, because I, um, I don't have experience being navigating fertility challenges or the health system or even or mental health issues in an Israeli context. I, I, my frame of reference is just the North American frame. Um, so I'm curious if there were questions about um, their relationship, their partnership, their struggles that were different based on the audience that was seeing the film. I think not so much. I think it was yeah, kind of received so. similarly. Sometimes like yeah. occas occasionally there was a question um, about like um, the challenges of trying to become a gay family in Israel, um, but not so much. Most of the comments uh, and feedback was um, just like shared empathy, um, even across like gay and straight people, like the, the feedback was very similar. Like a lot of people just felt um understood like people who, who went through the process um as i said not only gay people um just like straight or uh single moms who went through this process um felt that um they could just really relate to what was in the film and someone even told us after uh a screening that she went through this process and she um, she kind of never had the time to digest and like think about what she went through. And this film um, like helped her <laughs> kind of digest and look at herself from the outside and realize that what she went through was not that easy or like, um, and it was really powerful for her. So I think those are the main 
comments that I received and heard. Yeah, I, I also haven't noticed any difference. It's like, it's really, I think it touches a universal uh, heart wish of uh, becoming a parent. And uh, no, I haven't noticed the difference in, at the audience. I will give another perspective. It's, it's not against, but I think that there is a fact that this movie is screening mostly at like LGBTQ film festivals. It, it's, it belongs to the community. Like if you will do, um, I don't know, uh, percent. So I guess like 70% uh, from the community and 30 straight normal people. I think that films that talks about issues that are relevant for the gay community, they are sometimes stuck. You know, only gay people will come to watch, only they will be um, related to this or will be empathized to this. But I, what Mo said, it's so important because this issue is universal. Each woman or couple has this problem of having a child and by you know, and by and by talking about this, you can be relevant to each and every one. So I think this is the this is a problem, because what do you see when you look at this film? Do you see oh lesbians? Are they allowed to have babies here, or do you see the struggle of a person or like? Uh, you know, a couple to, to become a family. Doesn't matter what the sexual preparations of them. So I, I can see the, the difference. Along those lines, I'm curious if there are other stories about partnership or parenthood or relationships that you would want to be represented in cinema that are not yet represented in cinema. Interesting. Actually, it's it's kind of a secret ahead, but Astar and I, we are working on a TV show or TV series. And parenthood of uh, 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 mental illness, uh, women or people that they are already tagged as psychos by the societies and do they have the permission or the right or the you know the the, the approval from society to to be uh, parents so uh, this is my goal to put on screen yeah wow that sounds fascinating and i will watch that <laughs> So I'm, I'm glad you are bringing that to the screen. Thank you. I am curious if there's anything I haven't asked that you wish I had asked about your relationship to the film or how it has been received or your aspirations for what it will inspire or motivate in yeah, Israeli society. Yeah, I want to say something. Yeah. Um, and it's about, um, <clears throat> not what's in the film, but the process of making it. Um, and I'm talking a lot about a star, like on her behalf yeah. today. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but she has internet issues, so it's okay. Um, I was very, very inspired. And I mean, as an artist and as a woman and as a friend and as a person um, by a star and uh, the her process of making this film um, because like it was not, I, I, I hope it's okay to say, but it's, it was not the first feature film that she had written, but um, it was the first time that she decided that she's not waiting for anything or anyone, <laughs> and like not waiting for, um, for funds or for a big crew or for a producer or for anything. She just like, 
grabbed the camera <laughs> and like a script and just started like walking forward and she she didn't stop and um the film got bigger and bigger on the way <laughs> like people kind of started adding up <laughs> and joining like the ride of this creation and um and it was really beautiful and it she managed to do it and uh and i think that it, it's an inspiration um for me also as an artist and um that i would really like filmmakers to be inspired by that um to know that it's um possible to make films um uh, like feature films independently uh and create beautiful art um with uh, a few good friends and <laughs> um talented friends and and uh yeah an ambition and um uh, she's great and i really enjoyed working about uh, on this film with her thank you amazing more you need to be the president <laughs> <laughs> i would like to add uh, something about the um, that it was uh, what more just uh, described was a parallel to the process I went through of becoming a mother because uh, as I wanted to make this film, I also wanted to become a mother and uh, I just kept on going and nothing stopped me and I uh, cling to, to many dreams. Games through the process, like uh, doing. Um, I decided to that I'm just, you know, nothing start. Nothing will stop me, and I, I will become a mother. And I just kept on moving, and uh, I just I wanted to tell the if they want to make art or babies or. Whatever will make them full and uh, just do it and uh, not wait for any outside approval or something. Just do what you dream and uh, make it happen. I was, fr it froze again. Yes. <laughs> but we understood most of it. <laughs> the message was, the message was clear. <laughs> <laughs> there and the interruption yeah. with the technology. I saw through your reactions that yes. it froze. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I told you it's, it's a new house and uh, we are a third world country. I haven't fixed it. <laughs> uh, Have you been to Israel, Jordan? Yes, um, I've been to Israel many times. I have family in Israel, and my it wife is Israeli again. American. So, oh, um, yeah, she was born in Tel Aviv and then immigrated to the U.S. But her family, much of her family, still lives on Moshav Ben Shemin. Um, so we we actually are planning to visit this summer, which will be nice. Cool. So, cool. I don't know if that's going to be included in the recording. I, I hope not. Let's <laughs> meet. <laughs> Um, always here. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was such um, a, a gift to be able to hear from you in your own words, your own voices, how you collaborated on such a magnificent film. And I, for those who have watched the film and appreciated the film, I hope you will also be enjoying other films in the Boston Film Festival. Um, and I am so grateful to be in conversation with all of you. Thank you.